NASA has pulled off the ultimate cosmic photobomb, revealing mind-boggling images of Pluto that will make your jaw drop. These out-of-this-world snapshots offer an interstellar peek into the dwarf planet's secrets, leaving scientists and stargazers alike gasping for breath. Get ready to have your concept of space blown to the outer limits as NASA's groundbreaking mission takes us on an exhilarating visual journey to the farthest corners of our solar system. Let's dive into a bit of history first. Did you know that way back in 1930, a brilliant guy named Clyde Tombow made a remarkable discovery? He found Pluto. Now, the way he found it is quite fascinating. You see, Tombaugh was working at the Lowell Observatory in Arizona, and he was using a 13-inch telescope, a pretty impressive piece of equipment for the time. Tombaugh wasn't aimlessly gazing into the vast expanse of the cosmos. Instead, he was on a mission, trying to find a mysterious ninth planet. This hypothetical planet was originally proposed by Percival Lowell, a renowned astronomer who was convinced that something was out there. Lowell had noticed some oddities in the orbits of Uranus and Neptune, and hypothesized that another planet's gravitational pull could be causing these irregularities. Although Lowell passed away before the discovery, Tombaugh picked up where he left off. He spent countless hours scanning photographic plates, two at a time, using a machine called a blink comparator. This machine allowed him to quickly flip back and forth between two plates, which were taken at slightly different times. If there was a planet, it would appear to jump back and forth as he switched between the plates. Tombaugh wasn't looking for big, bright stars, but rather for tiny shifts that could potentially be a planet. And then one day his dedication paid off when he spotted a small dot moving against the background of fixed stars. That was Pluto. When Tombaugh discovered Pluto, it was a game-changing moment. People all around the globe heard about this discovery and were excited about it. It was on March 13, 1930 when the discovery of Pluto was announced to the public, marking an epoch in the field of astronomy. But here comes another interesting part. The newly discovered celestial body needed a name, right? That's when an 11-year-old girl from England, Venetia Burney, stepped into the picture. Inspired by the Roman god of the underworld, she suggested the name Pluto. It was very fitting for a planet dwelling in the cold, distant outskirts of our solar system. In addition to its appropriate connotations, the name Pluto also served as a fitting tribute to Percival Lowell. If you look closely, you'll notice that the first two letters of Pluto are the initials of Percival Lowell, quite the homage to the man who initially postulated the existence of this elusive ninth planet. Moving on to 1964, when a chap named Gary Flandro was working at the Jet Propulsion Laboratory, or JPL. He had an ambitious idea that might seem straight out of a science fiction novel, but it was all very real. He proposed a mission called the Grand Tour. Why grand, you ask? Because it involved a spacecraft visiting all the outer planets in our solar system, including the distant and mysterious Pluto. What made this Grand Tour idea even possible was a unique alignment of the planets that was set to happen in the late 1970s. This alignment would allow a spacecraft to use a method called gravity assist to journey from one planet to the next, like a cosmic pinball bouncing off the planets. But as you can probably guess, such an ambitious project carried a hefty price tag. So despite its grandeur and potential, the Grand Tour didn't get the green light due to its cost. However, the Voyager program, which was launched in 1977, did make use of this rare planetary alignment. Two Voyager probes embarked on their own versions of the Grand Tour, visiting several planets in the outer solar system. But unfortunately, they didn't make it to Pluto. Moving on to the 1980s, there was a moment when Voyager 1 had an opportunity for a detour to Pluto. It was after the spacecraft's close encounter with Saturn in 1980. The scientists and engineers at NASA were considering using Saturn's gravity to sling Voyager 1 toward Pluto. It could have been the perfect chance to visit Pluto with a flyby as early as March 1986. But science often involves tough decisions. Instead of shooting for Pluto, the team decided that a flyby of Titan, Saturn's largest moon, would be a more valuable scientific objective. Titan is unique in our solar system, as it has a dense atmosphere, and is thought to have lakes of liquid methane and ethane on its surface. So this decision, while ruling out the chance of a Pluto flyby, paved the way for some remarkable discoveries on Titan. 
but Pluto was still waiting to be explored. And some scientists were itching to find out more about this planet. So, in the late 80s, a group was formed called Pluto Underground, led by people like Alan Stern and Fran Bagenal. The group comprised scientists and engineers who believed Pluto deserved more attention. After countless hours spent in letter-writing campaigns, their efforts proved to be successful. Around 1990, NASA finally took notice and the engineers started brainstorming. But before they could move ahead, they had serious trouble standing in the way of finding out more about this elusive planet. They believed that Pluto's extra-long winter might result in the atmosphere freezing and falling down as snow. In order to tackle that, they needed to make a spacecraft that was lightweight, fast, and tough enough to make it to the surface of Pluto. That's when they came up with this cool concept called Pluto 350. The 350 referred to the weight of the spacecraft in kilograms. They wanted it to be pretty light, so they could shoot it straight to Pluto. And to get it there, they had their eyes on this powerful rocket called Titan IV Centaur. This beast of a rocket could carry the spacecraft all the way to the farthest corners of our huge solar system. But this was just the beginning. In 2001, a breakthrough program called New Frontiers was launched by NASA. The aim of the program was simple, to carry out medium-sized missions to find out the secrets of other planets. And their first fascinating mission was the New Horizons mission. Leading the charge was this really passionate planetary scientist named Alan Stern. He was all about space exploration and couldn't wait to get started. But he didn't do it alone. He teamed up with some really smart folks from places like John Hopkins University, Southwest Research Institute, Ball Aerospace, and NASA's Goddard Space Flight Center. So on January 19, 2006, something amazing happened. New Horizons was launched from Florida's Cape Canaveral Air Force Station. This spacecraft rode on top of this beastly Atlas V rocket, which was a total engineering marvel. That launch vehicle made New Horizons the fastest spacecraft ever. It was zooming through space at a mind-blowing speed of around 58,000 kilometers per hour. But New Horizons wasn't just flying through space for fun. It had a job to do. It was packed with all sorts of fancy scientific instruments designed specifically to study Pluto up close. They had cameras to take jaw-dropping pictures, spectrometers to analyze Pluto's surface and atmosphere, plasma detectors to check out the solar wind, dust sensors, and even a radio science experiment. Now, the trip to Pluto was a long one, but New Horizons didn't waste any time. Along the way, it swung by other cool celestial bodies and gathered tons of valuable information. In 2007, it made this really clever move by using Jupiter's gravity to speed up and adjust its course. It also checked out a couple of asteroids and objects in the Kuiper Belt. And then came the remarkable day of July 14th, 2015. New Horizons, the cool spacecraft we've been talking about, got really, really close to Pluto. I'm talking just 12,500 kilometers close. No other spacecraft had even been that near to Pluto before. And guess what? New Horizons didn't stop there. It also checked out Pluto's five moons, Charon, Nix, Hydra, Kerberos, and Styx. The images collected by the New Horizons showed a lot of complexity on the surface. For instance, there were ice mountains and vast frozen plains. The atmosphere was also in shades of blue, but the snow covering the surface was red. The data also led to the confirmation that Pluto's atmosphere had nitrogen, methane, and carbon monoxide in it. Pluto's largest moon, Charon, revealed a dark red polar cap, a feature not found anywhere else in the solar system. Meanwhile, Nix and Hydra, two of Pluto's smaller moons, turned out to be surprisingly bright. Kerberos, another moon, was smaller than expected, and Styx, the last of Pluto's known moons, had an irregular shape. Now, Pluto has a lot more going on. Pluto hangs out in this place called the Kuiper Belt, which is like a big icy ring way past Neptune. It's about 3.6 billion miles away from the Sun. That's a whole 40 times the distance between Earth and the Sun. After the Pluto party, New Horizons didn't just call it a day. Oh no, this little explorer kept on going. It zoomed deeper into space and entered the Kuiper Belt. It's like this wild, unexplored neighborhood full of icy leftovers from way back when our solar system was just getting started. Within this vast Kuiper Belt, the New Horizons team had their eyes set on something special. Arakoth, 
On January 1st, 2019, New Horizons swung by Arakoth and got super close, just about 3,500 kilometers away. Now that might sound far, but in the vastness of space, it's actually pretty darn close. Here's what makes Arakoth so amazing. It's the most distant and primitive object ever visited by a spacecraft. Basically, it's like a cosmic time capsule that gives us clues about how planets formed in the early days of our solar system. And get this, it looks like two snowballs that got stuck together. Two lobes formed by smaller objects coming together over a long time. And here's the kicker, Arakoth has ancient water, ice, and organic molecules, stuff that's important for life as we know it. Now, you might be wondering what New Horizons up to these days. Well, this little space traveler is still out there, cruising through the great unknown. Right now, it's over 7 billion kilometers away from the sun, but it's still up and running, talking to us back on Earth. And guess what? The adventure isn't over yet. New Horizons is expected to keep going strong until at least the mid-2030s. Who knows? It might even pay a visit to more Kuiper Belt objects if it finds any nearby. Plus, it's also checking out the heliosphere, which is like the sun's magnetic field and its influence on space. That part of the mission helps scientists learn how the sun interacts with its cosmic surroundings. So, New Horizons is one busy spacecraft, with lots more to discover. And here's what the recent pictures have revealed about Pluto. Pluto, despite being small, actually has its own atmosphere, although it's quite thin. It mainly consists of nitrogen, with a bit of methane and carbon monoxide mixed in. Interestingly, this atmosphere expands when Pluto gets closer to the Sun and freezes into a solid state when it moves further away. What's fascinating is that Pluto's atmosphere has a lovely blue tint and distinctive layers of haze. However, the atmospheric pressure on Pluto is incredibly low, about 100,000 times less than what we experience on Earth. Speaking of extreme conditions, Pluto ranks among the coldest places in our entire solar system. Its surface temperature can plummet to mind-boggling lows of minus 375 to minus 400 degrees Fahrenheit. That's about minus 226 to minus 240 degrees Celsius, depending on its distance from the Sun. Now let's talk about what Pluto is actually made of. It's an intriguing blend of rock and water, predominantly in the form of ice. Roughly speaking, two-thirds of Pluto's mass is rock, while the remaining one-third is water. This gives Pluto a density of around 1.9 grams per cubic centimeter, which means it's about twice as dense as water, but less dense than most rocky planets. As for its surface, it's like a captivating tapestry of ever-changing landscapes. There are majestic mountains that reach up into Pluto's thin atmosphere, deep valleys that have been carved into the icy crust, and colossal craters that may have formed due to cosmic collisions. Pluto's surface is also adorned with curious pits, towering cliffs, and intricate ridges. Plus, there are specific terrains in this distant world that you won't find anywhere else in our solar system. All of these incredible features make Pluto a truly unique and fascinating celestial object. We're sure you've come across that famous picture of Pluto displaying a remarkable heart-shaped feature on its surface. That heart-shaped region is called Tombaugh Regio, named in honor of Clyde Tombaugh, the discoverer of Pluto. It's an expansive area, roughly equivalent to the combined size of Texas and Oklahoma. Tombaugh Regio is a fascinating place of striking contrasts. One side, known as Sputnik Planitia, is smooth and bright. It's essentially a vast glacier made of nitrogen ice that moves and swirls due to convection currents within the ice. On the other hand, the eastern side tells a different story. It's rough and dark with mountains, craters, and valleys, showcasing the dynamic nature of Pluto's geology. Beyond its visual appeal, the icy heart of Tombaugh Regio serves an important role in shaping Pluto's thin atmosphere. As Pluto approaches the Sun, the nitrogen ice transforms from a solid to a gas through a process called sublimation. And as Pluto moves away from the Sun, the gas condenses back into solid form. This cycle of changing atmospheric pressure may even drive winds and weather patterns on this distant world. Now, let's direct our attention to the part of Pluto's surface that is always facing away from its moon, Charon, the far side also known as the dark side. Illuminated by the gentle glow reflected from Charon, often called Charon Shine, the dark side of Pluto unveils a variety of terrains and features. 
In the Northern Hemisphere, Venera Terra dominates the landscape, a highland region adorned with numerous craters. It provides a glimpse into the ancient and complex history of Pluto. Moving southward, we encounter Piri Planitia, a smooth plain made up of volatile ices. This bright region may have been reshaped by glacial or tectonic activities. Near the southern pole there lies Krun Makula, a dark area with a reddish hue. It bears some resemblance to Ktula Makula and is potentially stained by Ktolins, which are formed through the interaction of sunlight and methane in Pluto's atmosphere. These descriptions offer a more relatable perspective on the captivating features found on Pluto's surface, capturing the wonder and intrigue they hold for us as explorers of the cosmos. The exploration of Pluto has got us all excited and curious. We're on the edge of our seats wondering what other surprises and revelations this mysterious world has in store for us. There's no doubt that Pluto still has plenty of secrets up its sleeve, just waiting to be uncovered. Let us know your thoughts in the comments. See you next time.